Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at a new quantity that we developed in class called work. And sometimes work is also referred to as mechanical work. So we derived a formula in class today um, for work. And so it has the symbol W here. And the formula includes uh, a force, so some force that's exerted on an object over a displacement. So you'll see that the three quantities that we consider when we're calculating work will be force, cosine of a specific angle, times the magnitude of the displacement of the object. So I just kind of want to set some things straight here. Um, work can be a tricky quantity um, because this F that we're talking about, this force, is the magnitude of the force. So where F is only the magnitude of the force. So we know that forces are vectors, but we're not going to indicate the direction of the force. So if the force is negative 20 newtons, when you're calculating work, you put 20 newtons in there. So F is the magnitude of the force exerted on this specific object. And a similar thing happens with this D here. Uh, notice that it's not delta X. Um, it's, it's written here as D because ultimately it's distance. Um, which is the magnitude of displacement. So again, if the displacement were negative 3, to calculate work, we would just put in the 3 meters. Okay, and now this here, this theta, is going to be the angle between your force vector and your displacement vector. And that's why I really can't understate this, that it's imperative that you draw the force vector and you draw the displacement vector so that you can easily identify the angle between them. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. I'm gonna... Okay, so imagine that you have a wagon and you've decided to pull this wagon exactly on the horizontal right here. Here's you. Okay, and let's say that you are exerting a 25 Newton force on the wagon and that the wagon has a displacement, draw a delta x vector here, has a displacement of 3 meters. Now I could draw an entire force diagram for the wagon but really, if the question says, what's the work that you do on the wagon, I'm most interested in the vector that represents force of U on wagon. And I want to put these two vectors tail to tail. So my force vector and my displacement vector, you draw this as a dashed line. And you'll notice when they line up right alongside each other, that the angle between them is zero degrees. So this theta here is zero degrees. So when I want to calculate the work done, I'm going to use our math model here, the force exerted times cosine theta times d. So if I'm looking for the work that I do on the wagon or that you do on the wagon, work would be equal to 25 newtons times the cosine of zero degrees times 3 meters. The cosine of 0 degrees is positive 1. So now I have 25 newtons times 1 times 3 meters, which gives me 75 newton times meter. And a newton times meter is a special unit that we're going to learn about called a joule. It's named after James Joule, who was a famous physicist that 
investigated work and energy relationships who we'll talk about this week. And so to honor him, we have this unit capital J for Jewel. Okay. I want to take a similar example here, but we'll kind of change it up a little bit. So in the second example, you have this same wagon, but imagine that you're pulling it at an angle. So here's you. And you're pulling it at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. And let's imagine we're trying to calculate the work that you do on this object. So let's say that you're pulling the wagon with a force of 25 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. And this time you pull it a little bit further, the displacement along the road here is 4 meters to the right. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to draw those vectors tail to tail. So I'm going to get my force vector here, which is force of U on wagon. And I've got this at 25 newtons. But this time the displacement vector is just right along the road here. So your displacement is 4 and the angle between them is 30 degrees. Now what's interesting about this problem is I hope that it gives you an idea as to why this cosine theta exists in this math model. When we think about you pulling a wagon um, in this manner, the 25 Newton force that you exert is really not the force responsible for this displacement in the x direction. But in fact, it's the x component of this force that's responsible. And we know how to find the x component of this force at an angle. It would be the force times the cosine of the angle um, between the 25 newtons and the x component of force, which also happens to be this 30 degrees. So because we're trying to calculate the work that you do on the object, we're actually trying to, calc to use this force that um, is responsible for the displacement. So this example is a little bit different because this time the angle between force and displacement is not zero, it's 30. So we'll have force cosine theta and the magnitude of the displacement. So we'll have 25 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees times 4 meters. 25 newtons times 4 meters is going to give you 100 newton times meters. And the cosine of 30 degrees is about 0 0.866. So this gives us about 87 joules this time. All right, let's take a look at a different example. Imagine this time um, you're holding a pizza and you're standing there holding this pizza and you may get tired after a while um, if you're holding this pizza. Um, how much work are you doing on the pizza in this situation? Well, I can do a force diagram for the pizza. So I have system pizza and we know that there's more than one force exerted on the pizza. So we know that we have force of earth on the pizza down. And if I'm holding the pizza at rest, then the force of me on pizza, my hand here touching the pizza box, would be the same magnitude as mg to give us this acceleration of zero. So if I want to find the force um, that you or I um, exert on the pizza, it's right here. What's the displacement of the pizza? Well, if you're just holding the pizza, then the delta x here is zero. So how much work is done on the pizza? The force of you on the pizza is something. So if the mass of the pizza box is 2 kilograms, the force of you on the pizza is about 20 newtons.
But because there's zero displacement, you don't do any work on this object. All right, let's take a look at a different example. So this time, you've got a pizza, but you're going to bring it down the hallway here to share with us. So we've got a displacement this time of 8 meters. So you've got this displacement of 8 meters to the right. And let's imagine that the mass of this pizza box is 2 kilograms. So again, if we do a force diagram for the pizza, we find that there's a weight force for this pizza. Because there's no acceleration in the y direction, the force of me on the pizza is going to be the same magnitude as the weight force. So if this is about negative 20 newtons, the force I exert on it is positive 20 newtons. So now when I go and I draw force of me on the pizza and my displacement vector, the angle between them is a 90 degree angle. So when I calculate the work done by me on the pizza, I have F, cosine theta, and D. The force I exert on it is 20 newtons times the cosine of 90 degrees times 8 meters, which is the magnitude of the displacement. And 20 times 8 would give you 160 newton times meters. But the cosine of 90 degrees is zero, making the work zero joules. And I think you need to take a minute to think about why that is. I mean, if you carry objects for a long period of time, wouldn't you get tired? So why is it that you don't do any work? Well, it might help to think about it this way. The force that you exert on the pizza is upward. And this force really does not contribute to this displacement in the x direction over here. Therefore, there is no work done on this system. When we think about work being done on a system, it's a way that you transfer energy to a system. So in class today, when we talked about this chalk smashing ability, by moving this pizza 8 meters over to the right, you haven't really done anything to it to give it any new additional abilities. So another example is, imagine that you lift a 5 kilogram box up 1 meter at constant velocity. How much work do you do? Well, we need to identify the force that you're exerting on the box, and that's why this idea of constant velocity would be important. If we want to do a force diagram for the box, we would need to know whether or not it's accelerating. Because the weight force on the box is about negative 5 newtons, if you're lifting it at constant velocity, then the force that you exert on the box is exactly 5 newtons. If the box is accelerating upwards, then the force that you exert on the box um, is greater than 5. And if it's accelerating downward, um, you know, it could still be moving up, but maybe you're slowing down as you're doing so, then the force that you exert on it would be less than a magnitude of 5. So this is definitely something to consider if it's constant velocity or not. So here we have force of you on the box is 5 newtons. So when we go to calculate the work done by you, we take a look at our delta x vector. Our delta x vector is here. Our force vector is also up. So the angle between them is 0 degrees. So now we have 5 newtons times the cosine of 0 degrees times 1 meter. And the work done is 5 joules.